Hey YouTube, y'all know what time it is. Always chapstick time. I did go out early and cleared off my car because it snowed. I only serve pictures. The one with the rail is over my balcony. And the one without the rail is me standing outside all the way at the top of my third floor steps <laughs> looking out over the front parking lot. So that's what those pictures are. Today for the first time, I'm going to try the NYX. Oh, I got my contacts in so I can't read. <laughs> the NYX eyeshadow base. And this color is skin tone. And so I'm hoping, sorry for the glare of my reading glasses. So I'm hoping this one will blend in with my skin tone. So we're going to see. I'm going to speed through this. I was hoping this was going to cover my my under eye. My lid discoloration, my inner corner lid discoloration is here and that's here. And it does initially, but then when I blend it out, it doesn't. And also I noticed when I pat it with my fingers, it removed the primer. <laughs> and so I went back over it. It just lightly dabbed it with the brush. Or maybe I'm just using too much. But I'm hoping for something to cover that discoloration because I liked how the e.l.f. putty primer did that. The next one I'm going to try again, not today, is the... Urban Decay Eden Primer, which is a matte primer, and I do think this will cover, but it may leave more of a cast, like how this is less noticeable than the e.l.f. Putty Primer. It's still noticeable that I do have on primer, to me, looking here. Down here, not so much, but up here, you can definitely tell, well, I can definitely tell that I have something on my lids. I'm going today for another look with the Viseart. <laughs> Bridal Satins palette, and I'm going to do this column right here. So, what am I going to do? I'm going to do <laughs> inner corner, lid, outer corner. And then I'm going to put this underneath, and then I'm going to go into the Warm Matte palette for um, my brow bone and transition colors. And so... I didn't pull out any brushes. I am just so organized. All right, let me find brushes. I'm going to speed through this too. Pulled out three of my Real Techniques uh, flat angled brush. And we're going to go in, as I said, this color first, inner corner. Then I'm going to switch brushes, lid, switch brushes, outer corner. So I'm just going to try to do this as quickly as possible because... My videos have been kind of long lately, and I do appreciate you guys for being here. Oh, that primer creased. Jeez. Oh, this is a nice shade. I didn't think it was going to be that light. Did I? I don't know. Even though the primer creased, I'm hoping that the shadow doesn't. And I'm thinking the shadow will probably set the primer. I did notice with the... What did I use last time? The e.l.f. putty primer. I did have some creasing... But I don't know if when I patted it, I lifted the primer off like how I did with this one unintentionally. And so I'm not sure if that was that primer or just it being removed when I patted it in with my finger. I just said the same thing twice. Welcome to the crazy. TC Tan stands for the crazy troll nation of YouTube. The troll because I know I'm not a real troll. <laughs> but troll meaning... Just that I am not in denial of my facial so-called imperfections and just accepting that my facial imperfections are what makes me perfectly me. So it's really just about self-acceptance and just making fun of it because people, especially here on YouTube and like Instagram, oh, you have to have the perfect face, you have to have the perfect skin, you have to do this and you have to do that and cover this up, cover that up, use filters and all of that stuff. And for me, I'm like, just embrace who you are. So it's sort of me making fun of what people may say are imperfections, but I'm saying that's what makes me perfectly me. Your so-called imperfections are what makes you perfectly you. And embrace it. Embrace who you are 
and not feel like you're not good enough or your skin isn't clear enough or you have too many marks or you have acne scars and so oh my goodness let me just cover everything up no and so the troll nation is just accepting you are who you are and loving yourself for who you are without regard to what social media says or instagram says or twitter or youtube says and so if that sounds like something you want to work on if you do struggle with self-acceptance go ahead and click the subscribe button click the like button share this video and share this journey of just embracing who you are and that your so-called imperfections are what gives you character your imperfections are what makes you perfect and to not be ashamed of that and also that's why i don't always even wear makeup when i do videos because i look how i look and i think i might <laughs> You know, no, I don't like my under eye bags, my under eye wrinkles, my partial double chin. But you know what? It's part of who I am. And I love me. And it has been a journey. I'm 51. And so if you can relate to any of this at all, like I said, just go ahead and join in the journey and embrace who you are. So thank you for being a part of the Troll Nation. Self-acceptance. Going into the Warm Mats palette from Viseart also. And as usual, I'm going to take this shade right here. And just lightly <laughs> run that above these lid colors just to blend that. And I do like how this looks already, but this color is lighter than I thought it was going to be. And so I am going to put that this shade that I'm putting up here also here just to try to tone it down a little bit. And I really don't think it's working. Like these shadows did blend really nicely. I don't see that I need a lot of blending over here, like in this area where I am blending and putting that color, but I'm just so used to just putting something up there. But I do want to try to tone this down a little bit and have it more of an inner corner highlight and not a first third of my lid highlight. But it is nice to know what that color looks like. And I am glad that I did use it the way I did. This is a very, very, very simple everyday look that you can just wear anywhere. And initially when I looked at that row, when I looked at this row, I was like, what am I going to do with that? Like, how is that even going to look? Because I love the, the leathers, the <laughs> colors, excuse me, <laughs> do look really light. And I wasn't sure how they were going to show up on my skin but I am liking it the crazy part of TC10 is just what you saw I stumble over my words I sometimes say things that don't make sense or I'll be talking about something and I'll forget what the point was I was trying to make <laughs> and again those are things that makes me me and so um, this is not a channel of perfection this is a channel of realism and I'm noticing a dark line right here, and I'm wondering if that's from the primer or how I place the primer. And I have a feeling these shadows are going to crease because I'm seeing like a line right here already and a line right here already. Hmm. I want to do something else because I want some more color in this palette. I mean, I mean on my eye look. I'm going to take this top shade. This is still the Warm Mats palette. I'm going to use that as a brow bone highlight. This look, I do like it. And like I said, it is just everyday throw on. Is it there? Is it not there? It'll go with any look I think that you have as far as like your shirt or your jewelry. Um, but it's just not enough for me. Like I want more. Like this is just beyond basic. <laughs> but I think it's pretty though. I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to go up a notch. And I'm going to take, this is the first shade I put on. So I'm going to go up a notch and use this one. Oh, I just stuck the tip in here. And bring that a little lower than that first tan shade. I just need like some something, like some definition or some color variation up here or something. Mm, okay. You see what I mean? I like that. But I also don't want to bring it so far low that I'm covering up the lid colors when I look straight because I do have all of this extra skin. And so if I do put something directly in my crease, when I close my eyes, that color gets eaten 
<laughs> up by that extra skin. So that's why I go like this. And I can feel where my brow bone is. And I've been doing my makeup long enough to know that even though they say, you know, just look natural and don't raise your brows, put the color here. If I just put the color here and that's it, or just on my lid here, if I were to go like this or close my eyes, this whole area would have no shadow whatsoever. And so when you hear tips and tricks, try them and then do what works for you. Because <laughs> once you learn your eye shape, then you can raise your brow and put it put color on and know where it's going to go this is looking patchy right in here i don't know what to do i don't want to put more of that bright shade there <laughs> i'm going to take this yellow which may be a bad idea <laughs> and i'm going to wipe off that first brush i used for that inner corner color and i'm going to take the yellow from the mattes and press that in I'm going to press and drag. Okay, I'm starting to like this look less and less. I need to just leave it alone because I did like it initially, but seeing how it looked like it was starting to crease, um, I think the primer might not have been even. I don't know. I don't know. So I'm going to stop soon because if I keep messing with it, I'm going to end up not liking it. <laughs> Going back to the Bridal Satin Palette, I'm going back to that middle shade we used, this one here, that peachy orange pink shade. I'm also not good at describing colors. So I'm just going to put that where it was the first time, reinforce that. I'm not liking how my inner eye is looking. I'm going to go into that bottom shade and reinforce that. Build that back up on the outer corner. I have used now every shade in this palette. I do like this palette. I'm just throwing off right now and using different primers. The blending brush I use, no additional color. Taking a clean blending brush, I'm going to take this brown and run that along my lower lash line. I'm going to 630, I have a Zoom at 7, and I'm actually presenting on a mental health topic tonight, so that'll be fun. I'm seeing it here, but not down here, and maybe it's because of my contacts, which help me see far. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to take this shade here. This is still the Bridal Satins palette. I'm going to zip that, the same brush in there, and run this along the lower lash line. This is looking so different on camera than it is in my mirror. Maybe it's the lighting down here because the lighting down here is not as bright as up here. I like it. For liner, I'm going to speed through this. Do I want to do... Hmm. I'm aware I completely stopped my sentence because I was having trouble finding this brush in the midst of my eyeshadow brushes because it is a shorter brush and it's angled, so it was hiding. So we're gonna take uh, MAC Black Track Fluid Line. I find that I've been using this one a lot lately because it does not irritate my lids. And sometimes eyeliners that say they're waterproof, they dry out my lash line and make my eyes tear and I've had this one on with a look oh shoot I just messed up for up to 10 hours and my eyes were not irritated did not tear or anything I still have a new Steela smudge pot that I did use a few times and so I need to test that one out and see what where time I can get out of that before it irritates my eyes but for right now it is Mac Black Track Fluid Line. Hey, my little baby wing. My liner does not drink Red Bull. They do not have wings. And that is okay with me. If you guys have used the NYX 
eyeshadow base. Let me know how it works for you. Like, did I just apply too much? Is that why it creased? See, now it doesn't look like the shadow's creasing, but earlier it looked like it was. And it might have just been the lighting with that shimmer shade. I'm not sure. So let me know your experience with the NYX base. And I don't even know why lately I'm making such a big deal of my primer concealing my um, inner corner lid discoloration. And I think it's because when I tried the e.l.f. Putty Primer, it covered it. And I'm like, oh, wow, that looks really nice. And so I think that's what got me on the kick of wanting my primer to also conceal. And I get why people do use concealer. Oh, I just messed up <laughs> for the eye primer. But I don't want to do that because I don't want anything. Oh, this came out a lot thicker than I wanted. I don't want anything that heavy and that thick on my lids because... My lids are really sensitive and so I don't want to put an under eye concealer on my lids and I don't remember really having problems with eyeshadow in general not covering my inner corner lid discoloration and so it's not even a big deal so I think I'm just having COVID issues where I'm just making big deals out of nothing <laughs> because what else is there to do this one I always like, this one I don't, and I think if I keep trying to fix it, it's just gonna get thicker and thicker and thicker, and then I'm still not gonna like it. And so, as my niece told me once years ago, when I was trying to do my brows even, she said, sometimes auntie, you just need to just stop. And I'm like, you know what, you're right. So I, <laughs> and it stuck with me because like now it's like, I need to just stop and just let it be what it's gonna be. For inner rims, which I'm liking, which also does not irritate my eyes, is the Hourglass Mechanical Gel Eyeliner in Ocean Floor. I've had this on also for up to 10 hours, and my eyes were not irritated. However, it does fade. And no, I did not touch it up. But after 10 hours, when I removed my inner rim liner, there was still residue of liner there. It mostly just stays like right here in the middle. And the inner edge and the outer edges are what kind of fades because my eyes tear. Ooh, that just went under my lash line. Why well, she's like under my waterline. All right, so that is that. So I'm really liking this. I don't like that it's a mechanical pencil because it's not rounded and soft like other eyeliners. And so if I do accidentally rub it along my eyeball, I can feel it because it's sharp. But I just dropped my mascara. Be right back. I have it, I'm gonna speed through it. Gonna wipe off chapstick. Hot chocolate, Fenty Gloss Bomb. Gonna speed through it. And this, sorry about the noise, this is the finished look. Let me know what you're thinking. And as usual, if you have the Viseart, is that the right one? Yeah, Bridal Satins palette. <laughs> Let me know how you're liking it. If you've done looks with this palette, feel free to post them below and I will check them out. And thank you for watching. If you have any questions about anything, let me know. But do let me know about the NYX eyeshadow base and join the nation. Embrace yourself. Self-love, self-acceptance. Thanks for watching. Bye. So this is just a, a, a check-in. I've had this eye look on for, excuse me, for five hours. I put it on about six o'clock and it's about 11 o'clock now. And my eyes are 
burning <laughs> and so I'm gonna wash this off right after this video the only thing I used different was the NYX eyeshadow base and this is the shade skin tone so this is a no for me I used the Bridal Satin Viseart Palette and also the Warm Mattes Viseart Palette. And this is the fourth look I've done using both of these palettes and I have not had any issue. The other day I had a look on for about 10 hours. Didn't have any issue. And I've used the same products, the same liner on my inner rims, the same liner um, on my upper lash line. The only difference is this base. And also I noticed it's not quite creasing, but the shadow looks dry. And even though this is, this is an all shimmer palette, the Bridal Satin palette, I haven't had an issue with the shadows looking dry, almost like they want to flake off. And it's not flaking, but it looks like it wants to. And I have not had that look with any of the other shadows in here. And as I said, the only thing different was the NYX eyeshadow base. And so I don't even know if I wanna try this again, <laughs> just to be sure. This is the only new thing, so it has to be it. Like both of my eyes are burning. It's not good. And because I didn't like how the shadow laid on top of it, and it did start to crease at first and then as I added more shadow it didn't start to crease but then it's just looking funky like even in here where I put the matte yellow on top of that pale shimmer shade it it's it's just not looking right it's not looking smooth and maybe to you it is but what I'm seeing on my end it's not I do like this color combination just for a just really basic, simple, easy, there, almost not there look. <laughs> if it wasn't for the yellow, the rest would just blend in with my skin tone. <laughs> so it is a really everyday, super easy look to do. And it is something I will do again with a different base just to see how different it will look. And so that's it for me. Let me know your experiences on the NYX skin tone eyeshadow base what your experiences are it's my first time ever using it it was inexpensive which is awesome <laughs> let me know your thoughts below thanks